Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, RPG Retro Reviews. I'm Captain Courageous and I review old school modules and games in both past and present. This week I'm looking at a classic of the old school era, the 1983 release of the basic Dungeons and Dragons game by Frank Menser. This is the third iteration of the basic game after the popular Malvay and Holmes basic set. The rules were relatively the same as Malvay with a few minor changes and additions, though the format was significantly different. There's a lot to uncover with this edition, so let's get started. The 1983 Dungeons & Dragons basic set is the third iteration of the basic game, coming after the 1977 Holmes basic set, which is basically a re-expression of the original D&D rules, and the 1981 version by Tom Maldvey, which was actually a completely different game from the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons game. If that sounds confusing, it's only because it is. Many of us who started with Maldvey Basic went on to Advanced D&D and were not aware of the fact that they were two different games, and that forms the basis for some OSR games like Advanced Labyrinth Lord and the Advanced Rules for Old School Essentials. Written by TSR Luminary Frank Menser, who is responsible for starting the Role-Playing Games Association and many of TSR's classic products of the time, including the famous Temple of Elemental Evil, the 1983 basic set has virtually identical rules to the 1981 Maldvay rules, though there are a few minor differences that I'll get to in just a moment. The big difference between the two sets has to do with presentation and tone. With the Menser version, TSR was going for a tutorial style of rules presentation whereby the reader plays the game in a choose-your-own-adventure-path style in the first few pages of the player's book. This version of the game includes a 66-page player's manual and a 48-page DM's manual. Not included here is B2, Keep on the Borderlands, as with Holmes and Maldvay. Instead, there is a tutorial adventure in the DM's manual called Castle Mistamir. Starting with the player's manual, a new player would find explanations about what a role-playing game is and some very basic concepts before being thrust directly into an adventure playing a warrior seeking a bandit by the name of Bargle, who is terrorizing the area. It is said that he holds up in a series of caves and the player's warrior character has designs on capturing Bargle and becoming a hero. No map is given and everything is described in text. The tone here, unlike Maldvay, is directed more towards a younger player. The warrior uses a tinderbox to light a lantern because matches weren't invented yet, for example. The first encounter this warrior character faces is a giant snake. Though victorious, the warrior is injured and as the scenario continues, he meets a beautiful female cleric named Alina who heals his injuries and joins him on his quest. The scenario takes the time to explain to the player what a cleric is and some concepts behind the class before continuing on. This is also the part of the rules that broke the hearts of a million neophyte role players, as the lovely Alina is doomed. Once the duo catches up with Bargle, who turns out to be a magic user, she is slain at his hands by a magic missile and the vile spellcaster escapes. There are a few options the player can take to alter the outcome of the scenario, but regardless, in every one, Alina dies. It's a cruel blow, as the warrior has barely gotten to know this brave and kind mentor before she's cruelly taken down by the evil wizard. No! I was actually able to ask Frank Menser a few questions on Facebook Messenger, and he was kind enough to share an anecdote about this intro. To be sure the intro worked for anyone, we forced the executive secretary poll about 10 ladies who know little or nothing about D&D, to go through the intro cold. We tweaked it accordingly, and it still works for many. Indeed, the novel approach in the days long before YouTube, and people could just watch other people play to figure out what D&D was all about, brought millions of people to the game, but more on that later. The character of Alina was greatly expanded in GAZ-1, the first gazetteer, the Grand Duchy of Karamikos. She turns out to be the daughter of a Theatian noble, Merrick Halloran. Alina is sent to live in Karamikos after the death of her mother due to disease. There she comes to live with Merrick's brother, the baron of the town of Threshold, Sherlane Halloran. Alina joins the Church of Karamikos and the Order of the Griffin, where she acts as an adventurer and protector of Threshold. 
In GAZ1, she's 22 years old, and game statistics list her as a 12th level cleric. However, the final paragraph in her write-up suggests that if the DM has established that Alina died from the events in the D&D basic set, that she be renamed Annie L. Halloran. Alina appears again in the 1994 release of the Kingdom of Karamikos box set, which updated Karamikos to the second edition of Dungeons & Dragons. In this version, she's 10 years older due to the fact that the timeline has been moved up 10 years from the Gazetteer, from AC 1000 to AC 1010. Her background remains relatively unchanged, except now she's 32 years old and an 11th level cleric. Bargle also appears in Gazetteer 1 and the Kingdom of Karamekos box set. He's now Bargle the Infamous, a 15th level wizard in the employ of Stefan Karamiko's cousin, the vile and evil Baron Ludwig von Hendricks of the Black Eagle Barony. The Kingdom of Karamiko's box set, taking place 10 years later, has the vile wizard on the run and a wanted criminal after the fall of the Black Eagle Barony. In the Karamiko's box set, he's listed as a 17th level wizard. Interestingly, at Gen Con 2005, a game called Kill Bargle Volume 1, obviously a knockoff of Kill Bill, was introduced by game designer James Walker. In this simple dice game, the players get the chance to seek vengeance for Alina's death at Bargle's hands and kill Bargle. The PDF for this free game is still readily available, and I'll leave a link in the description for those who might be interested in wreaking a bit of bloody vengeance against the Vile Mage. These rules also appear in issue 144 of Dungeon Magazine. The introductory adventure for this box set is Castle Mistamir, an abandoned fortress that will be retroactively located in Mastara near the town of Threshold. A map of the upper dungeon levels is provided, but only the upper level is detailed. The first level is mapped with a brief description of what might be found there and left for the new DM to populate. The second level is unmapped but briefly described and left entirely for the DM to design. It is not on the scale of cool as the Tower of Xenopus from Home's Basic, but it's a serviceable and fun first-time adventure and is remembered finally by those who were introduced to the game through it. Interestingly, Castle Mistamir was revisited in 2007 in the final issue of Dungeon Magazine, issue 150. In this adventure, a group of third-level characters are hired by the ruling town council to bring the renegade Bargle to justice after the murder of local town cleric Alina. Rumor holds that Bargle now dwells in the bowels of a nearby abandoned keep. That adventure maintains the core background from the basic set, that of a wizard named Gygar who built the keep and died with no heir leaving the keep abandoned. The statistics are given for the third edition of the game and the upper level and two dungeon levels are detailed. The second part of the player's book is a step-by-step -step walkthrough of character creation, hand-holding the new player through an explanation of what the dice are for, rolling the character's stats, buying equipment, and so on. And then another choose your path solo adventure, this time using the character statistics the player just created. In addition, the player also is introduced to the concept of mapping, given small segments of the dungeon at a time, and encouraged to transpose them to graph paper as they go along. In this Choose Your Path numbered adventure, the player uses their newly created character and the dice to combat a variety of dungeon monsters. In the end, the player ends up with a map that should look something like this. The rest of the player's book is more of a traditional rulebook as the variety of character classes are laid out with spell descriptions following the appropriate class. In the center of the book are a few pull-out pages that contain all the charts in the game as well as a step-by-step -step guide on character creation. The DM's guide begins with something I definitely approve of and that's a glossary of game terms and abbreviation. It's a real shame this kind of thing has fallen out of favor with modern game designers. What follows is basically a pep talk on running your first adventure. The book holds the newbie DM's hand with mountains of short articles for such topics as the role of the DM, how to roll for reactions and do the various DM checks, and so on. Then it's on to the first adventure, Castle Mistamir. There is even more hand-holding and text walls explaining how each encounter should go and what to do when things go awry, as well as grade text to read to the new prospective players. The next chapter is procedures and rules and very plainly lays out how to go about running the game. After that is a monster section, treasures, and finally a little tutorial on how to create dungeons. The differences between Maldvay and Menser are pretty nominal. Clerics and Menser D&D get their spells from their beliefs. 
gods are not mentioned. Spell acquisition and saving throws are slowed down slightly, and the monster list is shuffled around quite a bit. Overall, however, it's the same rule set with higher production values, more mainstream professional art, its tone geared towards a younger audience, and a presentation that is part tutorial and part rules book. 1983 really does represent a major shift in TSR production values overall with new logos and upgraded trade dress for all their modules, source books, and rule books. The artwork for this box set was done by the amazingly talented Larry Elmore with interior art by Larry Elmore and Jeff Easley. This is also the same year that the Jeff Easley covers came out for the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons game. The box cover for Menser Basic and the artwork by Larry Elmore has become rather iconic. The evocative artwork has been featured in pop culture ever since. Wizards of the Coast reused the classic trade dress for their 4th edition starter set in 2014. In 2019, the red box art was revisited again with the D&D Stranger Things box set. In this iteration, the Elmore artwork is replaced with that which evokes the original artwork, but with the Demo Gorgon replacing the dragon and the warrior replaced with the Mike Wheeler character from Stranger Things. Following the Menser version of D&D Basic came the Expert, Companion, Masters, and Immortal box sets released from 1983 through 1986. These five box sets formed what is now called the BECMI or Beckme line and by most accounts was extremely successful. Getting TSR sales numbers for products during this time is near impossible to get a hold of, but fortunately, as I said earlier, I was actually able to ask Frank Menser directly on Facebook Messenger about it, and he was kind enough to reply. According to him, the Menser version of the game was the best-selling line TSR ever had, with language translations and global distributions running into the tens of millions. The line finally came to an end when the box sets were combined into the D&D Rules Cyclopedia in 1991 and discontinued. If you are curious about that line, I've already done an in-depth three-part look at the history of Basic Dungeons & Dragons, so please click the link above to get that series of videos. Like the D&D box sets before it, the Menser version of the game brought millions of new players to the game and it and its follow-up box sets expanded the rules for weapon mastery, dominions, and so on, and are considered by many to be the best iteration of the game and is as much a beloved version of the games as Holmes and Maldvay basic sets, if not more so. When I do my review breakdowns, I always try to evaluate the rules, especially in the case of old-school rules like this, for the time frame it was released certainly not holding things to today's production values. So let's go ahead and take a look at box set one, basic rules for Dungeons and Dragons, and use my D20 scale for presentation, style, and value. Presentation wise, I think this box set lands fairly high with a fun, if not heart-wrenching introductory group of scenarios that get the new player into the game as soon as they open the box. It's a great concept and I think Menser executed it very well. I'd only say that I think it makes things a bit clunky when using the rules as a reference later on once you're familiar with how things go. I get the idea of a DM's and player's book, but I think it would have worked out better if all the introductory parts and adventures were in one book while all the rules were in another. Either way, it's still very good, and that's what I'll rate it. 18. Style-wise, of course, who doesn't love the evocative art of Jeff Easley and Larry Elmore? This artwork is a iconic that alone rates this a 20. Finally, let's talk about value. The box sets retailed for $12 in 1983. Now, one might use an inflation calculator and suggest that in today's dollars, the box set is actually costs more, but not really. Certain things really don't translate like that, and it's important to note that lower dollar items tend to throw the scale off a bit. For example, on Amazon right now, you can get the 5th edition starter set, which came with a 32-page set of rules and a 64-page adventure and dice for $12. Thus, considering the contents of the box set in 1983, that's a pretty reasonable price. The PDF is available for download right now for only $4.99 at Drive-Thru RPG. That said, I don't think the Castle Mistamere adventure was nearly as good a starting adventure as, say, keep on the Borderlands. So rather than focus on just price, let's consider hours of play out of the box. 
In that regard, Holmes Basic would have the best value due to its excellent sample dungeon, Tower of Xenopus, and the inclusion of Keep on the Borderlands. Followed by Moldvay Basic, whose sample dungeon, The Haunted Keep, is okay, but also still has Keep on the Borderlands. Thus, my value rating for Menser Basic box set, which was priced at about the same as the other two sets, is a 16. That makes the overall rating for the 1983 version of the Dungeons & Dragons Basic set an 18. Just a quick announcement, as anyone who's been watching my channel for any length of time knows, I've always done my best to point out the best values for modules and games in my reviews at the very excellent Drive-Thru RPG website. I am now an official affiliate with Drive-Thru RPG, which means I'll get a little bit of money if you follow the links in my descriptions to make a purchase. Please, if you decide to make a purchase because of my review, do me and the channel a big favor and use the provided links in the description. Thank you in advance. I have part two of my City of Brass review coming up later this week, as well as other reviews of old school games and modules all month long. Please don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell so you get notifications when I upload more content. Like, comment, and share. Join the RPG Retro Review Facebook group and consider supporting the channel by becoming a Patreon. As always, my friend, may your D20 roll true and game on.